What it do everybody, it's your boy LOG from Where There's Smoke, back with another video review, and this time we're doing episode 5 of The Acolyte. Now, as I've said in pretty much every video review, uh, there's been a lot of criticism and ridicule surrounding this series, and some of it fair, some of it unfair, I mean, there's stuff they're kind of fucking up on, but there are things they're doing well about the series, I feel like I've kind of fleshed that out per episode. But this is the episode we were all kind of waiting for to see if everything was going to pay off. And there was a lot of action. Uh, there was a big reveal in the episode. And it really set up for us to see where they're going to take it for the last three episodes. Uh, I think we're going to get one more flashback episode to kind of see what really happened. Because uh, I'll get into it. But Soul kind of had a line in here that hinted towards the flashback. And he has as well in another episode where he said something to Osha of the effect of, uh, I'll tell you everything when we get you and May safely back to the ship. I think that was in episode four. So he said something else. I'll get to it later on when I'm reviewing this episode. Uh, similar to that in episode five. But other than that, uh, most of the episode was the battle. And then, of course, there was the big reveal kind of at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So most of this episode, as I said, is the big battle. And the episode picks up right where episode four left off, where uh, Smilo Ren, as everyone's calling him, uh, force pushed Osha to the side and then force pushed all the Jedi back. So Osha kind of wakes up. She realizes the battle's going on. And one thing I kind of noticed from this big battle, the kind of takeaways are one, the Jedi are not used to dealing with someone that fights like this, and this is kind of a reoccurring thing in the episode. And at one point, I think you even hear Yord say, uh, he's not fighting um, traditional, he's not fighting by the rules. And it's like, I just don't think y'all are used to like real, actual combat. Y'all are used to all these training scenarios. And another thing I realized about the first battle, or something that I was questioning, was... The Sith was pretty much engaging with, like, all the Jedi, which was trying to, I guess, showcase, like, how much more badass and powerful he was than them. But I couldn't help but wonder where Master Soul was. Because at the... About halfway through the opening scene, uh, as Smilo Ren was chasing Osha through the forest, Soul showed up to protect her from the throw lightsaber attack. But where was Soul when all the other Jedis were getting slaughtered, or all the other Jedi, should I say, were getting slaughtered one by one, he was nowhere to be found. So, I don't know if that's just a story inconsistency, or bad writing, or what was up with that, but there's several little things here and there with Soul that make you question what the hell's going on with him. Before I get away from this opening scene, I just want to say again before I forget and I get too far in the episode, that the fight... There were many different little battles, I guess all one fight, but several different little mini battles going on throughout the episode. They were all really well done. This first scene really set it up to be action-packed and fast-paced, and uh, it was really enjoyable. I think everyone really liked this episode and really liked the Sith character, the way he fought, his power usage, uh, the reveal at the end, just everything about him, his character, his mystique. Everyone really loved the Sith character, and that's what really made this episode pay off, I feel like. So after the first scene, it picks up with May still in Kalnaka's hut. And there for a while, she's kind of uh, reeling from everything that's going on and trying to figure out what she's going to do. And then it's like all of a sudden she starts thinking that she could find Kalnaka's lightsaber and use that. So she starts looking for that. And then before she can really, uh, she grabs it and goes to leave the hut. But as soon as she gets out and before she can make much progress, she's attacked by Jackie. And they have a whole little battle uh Jackie is uh Yord's uh, apprentice and she's trying to arrest her she's like telling her you know you did all this stuff blah 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 so they have a little struggle and then eventually May gets away with the help of the Sith character who is able to subdue Soul enough to get over to where May and Jackie are fighting and kind of intervene in that fight he fights Jackie and then ends up leading to May escaping. And then he kind of distracts Jackie and pursues May, which ends up leading to the big battle again where Soul and Jackie kind of take on uh, the Sith character together. So while May and Jackie are kind of struggling, you have the initial fight with just Soul and the Sith guy. Sorry if it kind of jumps around a lot, but in the beginning you have May and Jackie fighting while Soul and the Sith character are fighting. 
And the battle between Soul and the Sith is really badass, really cool. They seem equally matched. And it's cool to see that kind of jumping back and forth in the episode. And it seems like there could be potentially something more between these two. So you have the interaction between Soul and the Sith. They're having a battle. Soul's trying to like prime for information. You know, show your face. Tell me who you are. What kind of master doesn't let their apprentice know who they are. And the guy's just, you know, saying all the Sith things. Like, no, I'm not going to show you, uh, you know. Jedi, he says something to the effect of like, what kind of master doesn't show their apprentice their face? And then he says, you tell me. Just insinuating that the Jedi are not like as high and mighty as they always seem. Anyway, after he battles with Soul for a minute, he eventually kicks him and subdues him a little bit so that he can get away and go check on Mei and see what she's doing. So then the Sith shows up on the scene with Jekki and Mei battling. He starts battling Jekki. And they have a good little back and forth. Jeki holds her own for a minute. And then May takes off. And the Sith gets rid of Jeki and pursues May. And then you have a little scene with Osha and Yord contemplating if they should go back and help. And they have that, they flash back to that a few times. You can kind of sense that they're playing with that throughout the episode of them potentially getting pursued by the Sith once he doesn't have anyone else in his way and them contemplating to turn back a couple times to help everybody. So it kind of had like a horror movie vibe almost. Um, but then you jump to the scene where the Sith and Jeki and Soul are all three fighting. And it's, again, a really badass fight scene that kind of is part of the overall battle. And then at some point when they're all going at it, Soul, uh, his lightsaber gets knocked out. And so he kind of charges in, gets a few punches in on the Sith, and then the Sith does a little move. Soul's lucky without a lightsaber, he didn't get killed. But it's all story and writing, so I understand. The Sith, like, kicks him back, uh, or I think, like, trips him and kicks him or something like that and kind of gets him away. Then Jeki flies in and screams and, like, does her part, like, to attack the Sith while Soul's down. They have a little battle, and then at the end of this exchange, the Sith has this badass move where he... His lightsaber is really two in one, but we never know it. His hilt basically has two lightsabers, so he like twist, untwist them, disconnects them, and you see at that point it's two lightsabers. But he does it all quick. He like just untwists them, clicks them apart, turns them on, and then you see it from behind Jackie where he just pokes her three times real quick to kill her. And it's like it's all done real quick, real clean, and you can tell that's one of his like ace moves. And the way it was all shot was really well, and that was. The whole battle throughout the whole episode was done well and shot clean, but that was a clean as hell scene. And then also, as Jackie's dead body drops, you have the reveal of Quamir being the Sith, which everyone kind of knew, but it definitely paid off well. And uh, we can say everything we want about how bad the series is and the things that they get wrong, but this is one of the things they got right. They kind of sprinkled it in over the last two or three episodes uh, where we saw Quamir give... Uh, May the potion and uh, we saw him ambushed by the Jedi and him act all intimidated and then we saw the next episode with him walking through the forest with May those two or three different scenes where he was acting shady saying things he really shouldn't have known there was little hints here and there and then to this episode wow what a payoff uh, what great fight scenes and just yeah really good episode so then after that we have the really good scene where Kumir, now that everyone knows who he is and he's unmasked, uh, has this dialogue with May and with Soul. He, it's interesting when he addresses May, he turns the voice and the act of Kumir back on just to like let everyone know that was a total motherfucking act. I mean, obviously they know at this point, but it really just uh, hits home for the audience and everyone that like that was an act and I pulled it off great. And like I like how he. It's almost like he does something to reverse because usually you would see like the dark character throw their cloak over Soul's face to like distract him and then him return to his old self. But he like returns to his old self real quick and then like throws the thing over Soul. It's almost like some sort of symbolism, but it's like a reverse thing. And I, I guess he throws the cape over Soul to distract him enough so that he can force pull May to him and get that whole situation where he has her as a hostage and he's able to like basically... Uh, you know, do the dark side thing where he tells her how she failed and have her as a hostage and get into everyone's head. But it's just real interesting to me because typically, as I said, you would see the villain uh, 
maybe throw the thing over Soul's face and then turn to his old disguise and and his old voice and talk to me like, oh, hey. But he, he says, oh, hey, I guess it doesn't make a difference whether he throws the cape first or not. But I just thought it was an interesting way. And I like the way that it played out where he's like, oh, hey. And then he like threw the it's almost like that was a distraction for the cape to be a distraction for him to then force pull her. But I just thought it was really interesting the way that he broke character right there to show everyone I'm in charge of this whole situation. I only show you who I am when I want to. And I really never was that nervous old character, but it's almost like just a flex in a way. And I really like how they wrote it, how it played out on screen and just the sequence of, oh, hey. And then he throws the cape over Soul's face and then force pulls her to him. I really liked how that played out. And it was just a little different from how I feel like that's usually written, but I really liked the difference. And I, I feel like this is one of the areas where I really want to emphasize something this series is doing well. And this episode, they did a lot of things really well. And uh, so, yeah, this scene was another one. Something else I really liked about this scene was uh, right before the little part that I'm talking about where he broke character or let himself break character was like oh hey to me uh there was a dialogue between him and soul where soul was like how could you kill uh her she was a child and very calmly kumir's like you brought her here and it's like very calm very dark but it hits hard and true and maybe that's why it's even more hard hitting in the time when you hear it because it's true it's like damn he dropped it's dark, but he dropped a fact on you, Soul. Like, why'd you bring... You brought so many Jedi, but why'd you bring a child? And you brought so many people that it didn't seem were ready and up to the task. So then when Quimir force pulls May to him and he's choking her, uh, he's basically grilling her and like, you really had no idea, no intuition that it was me, not even deep down. He's almost like, come on now how did you not know that i could have been the master and i think she did but he's just like grilling her for not questioning it more questioning it sooner and basically you know as any master wants better out of their pupil but this is how the sit do it they try to like you know do it in an aggressive mean negative way to like pull more out of their pupil and while he's doing this soul attacks him and then he kind of retorts at soul like oh my god you you dare to attack me while my back is turned and the thing is he had no problem fending off that attack while his back is turned just to show that he's every bit as powerful as soul if not more and then just when you things can't get more climactic and more crazy uh yord comes back to try to save the day with him and may because remember how i said there were several scenes where they were cutting to them and they were deliberating if they were going to come back and if they needed to help and blah 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 so yord comes back he force pulls uh quimir's helmet up i guess to, like help with his assault or something and him and quimir have a little combat but quimir uh disables yord's lightsaber on his wrist and then they have a little hand-to-hand -hand combat and Quimira basically just like toys with him like, oh, you, I can't believe you came back type of thing. And then just like twist his arm around. I'm probably not aware of what like fighting moves he's doing at all because I'm a dumbass and a noob when it comes to like fighting. But he like twists his arm and twists him around and then gets his head in a position and just basically breaks his neck. And it is like badass and like scary at the same time. And it's like, whoa, we've never seen anybody and the only one that would kill that way is probably a Sith. But it's like we've never seen a Sith or a bad guy in Star Wars kill with like hand to hand, like just break someone's neck. So it was awesome and badass and scary. And it just added more to this character. Like, damn, even when all his weapons are down and out and there's multiple like adversaries for him in the area, uh, he has no problem like disarming somebody and just killing them hand to hand. It was kind of wild and crazy. And then I'd have to go back and look because I'm not sure whose lightsaber Soul gets a hold of. I don't think it's his, but he gets a hold of somebody's lightsaber and he gets Quimir and he's like holding him, uh, like holding the lightsaber to his neck, basically like, I'm going to kill him and, you know, going to let his rage take over. And then Osha has like her Jedi moment where she's like, no, you can't let your rage take over. You can't kill him. Um, and then she attaches her little droid, I believe its name is Pip. She attaches him to the back of Quimir with its light on and all the moths from episode four come back and carry Quimir off and kind of like get him away and kind of uh, don't really win the battle, but at least get him out of there. Almost like use a whirlwind to use a Pokemon reference. They just roared his ass right out of there. A whirlwind would be more uh, accurate because it's a bunch of like uh, bugs with wings. But anyway, they whirlwinded his ass right out of there. So in the aftermath of Quimir getting carried off, 
Uh, this is kind of what I was referencing in the beginning of this uh, review, where Soul says something that references the flashback. May asked him kind of like, what was Quimir talking about with like, you not showing your face and all these lines that like questioning you. And Soul just kind of like, I'll explain later. It's like, why is it always later? Why is it always down the road? Like, what the fuck happened? Let us know now. Why do you seem to be carrying all this guilt and shit to the past? Um, I really think we're going to get a flashback episode next week. But it's just adding to the mystique of Soul and like what's really going on with him. And he's not as simple as he would seem at first. And then right as they're having this exchange, May shows back up and stuns Soul. And then her and Osha go off and have this talk. And then it kind of shows that maybe Osha and May will convene, will agree. You don't know what's going to happen. And then they disagree. And Osha, or excuse me, May ends up overpowering Osha and knocking her out. And basically switching identities with her and taking her clothes and meeting back up with Soul. So that at the end of the episode... Uh, May, disguised as Osha, is back on the ship with Soul, going back to Coruscant and the Jedi Temple. And you have um, Osha, who is knocked out, gets found by Quimir, and I'm pretty sure he knows it's Osha because of her tattoo. And he basically says a little thing, and it almost seems like he's going to take her into his training and try to use the, the things Soul has kept from her and her questions against everyone and maybe there'll be a switch up. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next three episodes. So I think that's about it. What happened through the episode? I may have missed one or two things, but I want to get away from trying to cover every single thing. I mean, if you want to know what happened, you're going to go watch the episode, but I just want to talk about what was badass, what I appreciated the scenes that really were memorable and kind of flesh those out and give my opinion on. So I really love this episode. The series is finally starting to pay off. I feel like, uh, there were things I liked about it from the beginning. Uh, you know, you can listen to the critics too much and it might spoil something that you're enjoying otherwise. I feel like that could be the case with this series. So if you're a Star Wars fan and you really like just good action and not a great story, but like it's good enough and it has some plot holes, but it's overall good enough that I really like this show. I think this episode really was a turning point to make it an overall good series. I'm excited to see how they finish the season. Uh, if there's any more big reveals of maybe major characters that are going to be in the show or if anyone from the flashback uh, from the Witch Coven is actually still alive. So I'm interested to see if there's any big reveals left and I'm very interested to see where they're going to take this in season two and hopefully this show can be a three or four season show that really adds to the Star Wars legacy and lore has a lot of good battles, good in-depth characters, and really something we can look back on and be like, you know what, this started out cheesy and shitty, but after season two and three, and then season four, man, that was a good show. So I really have high hopes, and maybe staying away from the critics on this one is something that could help. But there are still little things here and there that they could improve and shape up on. But overall, I really like where this series is going. This episode, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. Uh, amazing episode, and I hope to see more of this going forward. So I guess that's my review for episode five. And until the next video, that's LOG from Where There's Smoke. I'm out.